So today we're going to be applying the Colorlock Elephant Fat Leather Preserver. I'm going to be showing you guys how to apply the leather preserver and what kind of benefit it can give to the leather applying it in this sort of fashion. Before you apply anything uh, protective to the leather, you first have to make sure it's completely clean. So you're going to want to use either Colorlock Leather Cleaner Strong or Soft depending on how soiled the leather is. So if it's very dirty, you're going to use the strong one. If it's not so dirty, you'll use the mild. And once you've cleaned the whole leather interior, then you can go ahead and start applying the leather preserver. So in order to do this, as you can see, it's a waxy consistency product and we're going to apply this using the palms of our hands. So first we'll want to put on some gloves. Now you can also apply the Elephant Fat Leather Preserver with an applicator pad, but in order to get the best application and penetration, you want to apply it using the palms of your hands, so that way you can really massage it well into the leather to make sure that it gets a very nice application, very nice and even, as well as getting into the pores and cre crevices of all the leather. So come have a look and you'll see we have a perfectly clean seat. We did a uh, steam cleaning on this leather, so it's completely uh, steam clean to make sure that there's no oils or grease or anything like that in the surface. And now we're gonna go ahead and apply the elephant fat. So now you have dry gloves, so you're gonna have to prime the gloves a little bit first. So you're gonna wanna scoop a small amount, maybe about that much or so into your hands. Sort of just rub it around inside your palms to grease up the gloves really nice. Once you have them nice and greasy like so, you're going to want to get a little bit more. About the same amount again. Now we're going to rub this around, but keep most of it on your fingertips. You don't want to rub it mostly in your palm, you want to keep it for the majority of the part on your fingertips. Then you're going to start rubbing it into the leather surface here. Now don't be afraid if you put it uh, too thick, you can always spread it out. Just want to make sure you're making a nice even contact with the leather in order to fully push it all over the surface and make sure it's getting inside all the little cracks and crevices of the leather. So you want to get a little bit more. As you can see, if I keep spreading it, see nothing really is coming out anymore. So that's when you know you need a bit more. Get a bit more, rub it into your hands again, and continue. And you want to make sure that the coat is very nice and even, and it's evenly penetrated into the leather. For example, uh, let's finish off this part here, and then I'll show you what I mean. Make sure you go section by section also to make sure you don't miss any spots. If you were to miss a spot, it's just not going to receive the benefit that the elephant fat could provide to the leather as a whole. You're not going to get the full nourishing as well as waterproofing effect if it's not applied properly. So uh, as you can see here, it's nice and evenly applied. It doesn't look streaky or blotchy at all. That's exactly what you want. You want more product on there than less product. You'd rather have more and be able to take off the excess than have not put enough and it not really uh, revive the leather the way that you'd want it to. So if you were to have not applied enough, for example, or had tried to spread it too thinly, you would get it appearing like so, for example. As you can, compared to here, as to here, you can still see the white in all the cracks of the leather. That's when you know you still haven't put enough product onto the surface because you need to have it like this so it's completely saturated inside every single crack and crevice whereas you can see here it's not yet. So we're going to have to apply a little bit more in that area. And see how it starts to run thin? So that's when you're going to have to get a little bit more again. See how you want to make sure you go all the way around the edges of the leather, all the way from seam to seam. You don't want to just do the top surface that you see, you want to go all the way around until you feel the end of that leather. Just to make sure that you get everything 100%. Alright, and then as you can see, now we have the leather seat bottom here already coated with the elephant fat completely, nice and evenly. You can give it one nice final pass just to make sure that it's nice and even and you don't have any high spots that are uh, with a lot more product than others, just to make sure. And, all right, so now that we have the elephant fat applied to the chair, we're gonna be applying a bit of heat using a heat gun. 
You can use a blow dryer or some other source of heat if you don't have a heat gun, although a heat gun is preferred. Uh, the way I use it, I put it on high heat and from about this far of a distance from the leather or so with a fanning motion to be able to evenly apply heat to the leather without overheating it. You don't want to leave it in one spot for too long because then you could overheat the leather. So you want to make sure that you're constantly moving like so. You don't want to be like applying it direct heat. You want to have a nice fanning motion. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the heat gun on to high heat. As you can see now, it's going to start to heat up. Allow it to heat up until it starts turning red. And we're going to go ahead and apply it to the leather. You'll see as I apply the heat to it, as you can see it liquefying wherever I'm going over with the heat gun. And that's going to allow it to saturate faster and better into the leather. You want to cross it one way and then crisscross back the other way just to make sure you don't miss any spots. The reason we apply the heat is so that way it can be more readily absorbed into the leather itself. So that way you get a quicker penetration as well as a better application that's going to provide more protection and more nourishing benefit. Alright. And that's it. Make sure you turn off the heat gun and place it somewhere where, because this is going to remain very hot, make sure you place it somewhere you're not going to touch it. So we're going to leave it up here on top of this metal rack. And now as you can see, you can see how it started to liquefy. You can see here, for example, how it's already penetrated into the leather and you can see how it's starting to look like as if it was missing some product. You don't want to touch it at this point. You want to let it sit just like it is for at least a couple of hours. Overnight is the best thing you can possibly do. If you're going to be working on the car for anything longer than a day, uh, if you're going to ha be detailing a car for a week or so, for example, you want to do the leather first so that way this can cure and settle in while you're doing the exterior of the car just to give you a bit more time to be able to allow this to saturate into the leather. And that's about it for that. And then now I'll show you how to wipe it off. The other side of the car we did earlier this morning, so it's been sitting for about five or six hours. We're going to show you how to go ahead and wipe it off and reveal the finished product that the elephant fat leaves behind. Alright, so now after we've let the elephant fat sit for a few hours or overnight or for up to a week if you had the car for that long, you're going to want to give it a wipe down with an all-purpose microfiber towel afterwards. You want to make sure you're not using a terry cloth or paper towel or any other or cotton rag because those can leave lint as well as they're not going to absorb the elephant fat as well as a microfiber towel would. So we're going to keep this uh, squared into a shape like so, just as long as we can. So that way we can make sure that we have a fresh surface to reveal once it begins to become saturated. So you're going to want to look at the leather here. This is what you would get after sitting for a few days. You're going to see it's blotchy. It doesn't look very even at this point, And that's because it's already started to saturate into the leather. So at this point, we're going to wipe off the excess, which is then going to leave us with the finished result. And you can use a bit of pressure when you're removing it. Don't be afraid. You know, you got to make sure you get most of the shininess out of it to make sure that we're not leaving any excess behind. So okay, now the towel started to become saturated. As you can see, it's not picking up as much as it was. So I'm going to flip to a new section and continue. So now that we've removed the excess with the microfiber towel, it, you'll be ready to see the finished result of the Elephant Fat Leather Preserver. As you can see, it may not appear perfectly even. Don't be afraid because this is completely normal with this product. It takes up to a week to achieve a fully cured uh, state. Leaving it out in the sun is going to accelerate the curing process. Uh, at this point, you don't want to apply further heat because you don't want it to liquefy anymore. You just want it, the leather to be able to absorb it and naturally all the streakiness that it has, all the blotchiness that you see after you've wiped it off with the towel, that'll all go away so you don't have to worry about that. And then after you're done removing the excess from the rest of the interior, you're going to want to make sure you remove any elephant fat that may have gotten on plastics or chrome trims or windows or anything like that with appropriate cleaners for those and you'll have a finished result after that. Thanks for watching our video tutorial. If you like our videos, please feel free to share them on your social media page. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos from SSD. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.